Hello everyone, uh, you guys might remember a couple weeks ago we had a video uh, where my friend and I tried to fix this power supply here. We did find a, a blown, out, blown out cap, we replaced that but it was not enough so we had to do some more due diligence and try and find something else broken in here. Uh, I, I seek for some help in the EV blog forum and some people, nice people there helped me out as well. And well, the main, the main, or the first thing we started looking at is below this heat sink here. There's a controller circuit, uh, and that controller circuit basically means what people suggested is, you know, hey, have you at least checked if the voltage is getting there? And sure enough, I hadn't, so I, I did it. Uh, so pins five and seven here are where the control voltage, or I mean the the voltage, the feed for the control part of the circuit should be coming to. And if I try to measure that, you guys are gonna see there's nothing there. So yeah, that hints at a problem. Uh, so all I had to do was backtrace from here to where the uh, the feed or the, the voltage for this rail here is being generated. Uh, looking at the schematic, it I mean the the rail here, which called this pin here, is called LVCC. So I went to the schematic to see where that was going to be that that was being generated. So that's what we're going to check next. Okay, so this LVCC pin here in the control circuit is being powered up by a sub circuit here, which is basically I mean it's like it it takes a voltage from an, another rail called VCCP and generates the rail VCC1 which is the which is then the one that powers the control part of this circuit here so uh, it's based around a TL431 uh, reference so that's the first thing I'm gonna measure in here so pins 2 and 3 anode and cathode I should be seeing something there and as you guys can see I'm not seeing anything meaningful so I went back and checked okay the VCCP voltage that is supposed to be pouring up this sub-circuit here, how does that look like? So I keep my one of the probes there in the earth uh, or the ground terminal of the TL41 431 and I go to the transistor here that I look at the schematic and should be getting some voltage and nothing. So I'm going to trace it further back to where this uh, VCCP voltage rail is being generated. So the VCCP rail that we talked about before that should be pouring out this part here is being generated out of these little transistor here, uh, QB901. So I'm going to measure the output of this transistor and you're going to see there's nothing there, so as we suspected. So I'm going to check what is pouring up this part. So this is a very simple sub-circuit actually, it's just, uh, it's just a... Uh, like a pass transistor uh, so I'm getting a rail before that which is called VCC and uh, it goes through this pass transistor to generate the VCC one that then goes in here so on and so forth so if I go back one more step and check where this VCC voltage that should be pouring this up is being generated it's in this transistor here uh, QB903 so if I measure this transistor here you're gonna see that I do get 17 volts as it is supposed to be so the problem must be between here and there so by doing some measurements I think what is what has gone is this transistor here so uh, we ordered a replacement and that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna try and replace this little transistor here I did measure the resistor the resistor is fine, it's supposed to be 1K and it is 1K just fine. I'm going to take out this capacitor here as well and have a look just to make sure because I measured it in circuit and you know that's not good so I'm going to take it out and measure it but I'm going to also replace this transistor anyways because we got replacements for it so but I'm 99% I'm sure this is a problem so we're going to replace this transistor and see if that's enough to bring it back to life. I think it is because you guys saw the radio I mean we could do we do get everything working up to this point so I'm hoping once we fix this then all the rest is gonna work fine 
So I'm, I'm hoping there's nothing wrong here uh, or, or here. Okay, let's do it. So we replaced the little transistor there. Uh, it's a 5160 PBS 5160, I think from uh, from NXP transistor. So it's a it's a like kind of a special PNP transistor. It's a low VCA VCE set voltage, just so it dissipates low a little power. So moment of truth. Let let's see if there's anything there now. Ricky, nothing. Oh, hold on, it's <laughs> it's not part of that way. It doesn't work. Ah, <laughs> uh, still nothing, man. I think we're out of luck. Let me just try and measure a couple more things in here. So let's just see the. Let me just see if we are getting. Voltage in here. Yep. And then the five volts rail, I think it's here. So yeah, five volts there. Yeah, but nothing on the other race, so oh man, this is turning out to be more difficult than I thought, so I'm gonna have another look. Um maybe what I'm gonna do next is just have a look at this capacitor here just to make sure. Uh, I do have replacements for it, I think, so maybe I'll just have a look at that and see, but... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Alright, so I think we have good news. Uh, what happened is that, I mean... I noticed that there was a... I look at the schematic and I, I noticed that... the There was like a, an enable pin to that... Fitting into that transistor that we replaced. That's in the back of the board now. Uh, so I, I trace it back, it was one of these opto optocouplers here and it was labeled enable. So what happens is that this, uh, I think what happens is with this uh, TV is that we saw that the 5 volts rail was working from the beginning. So I think it, it feeds the 5 volts into the logic part here somewhere and then it runs like an initialization uh, routine or something and then it feeds back a sign here which is uh, yeah, in this connector here called PS underscore on. So that is what uh, goes into that enable pin that I mentioned before through an optocoupler. So uh, I decided, well, it, it didn't work at the bench, but I thought, well, maybe that's because this PS on sign is not uh, enabled. So that's what we did. We put it back together and voila, if you guys can see the glare there, it's, uh, it's turned on fine. So now remains the question uh, if that transistor was really bad, I don't know. I think it was because I tested with my, my multimeter and it was uh, one of the junctions was, was bad. So yeah, I think there was something wrong there as well, but I think I'll, uh, maybe I should have done this before as well when I exchange, when I replaced the capacitor first. Uh, maybe that could have solved the problem, I don't know. But anyways, we replaced the transistor and now it's working, so success. Okay, so just to illustrate a bit better this, uh, how this thing works, so here's the diagram, the schematic. Uh, so this PS on signal basically drives a transistor that goes into the optocoupler and then into that transistor I replaced. So a uh, good thing, I mean I tested again just to make sure, uh, and that transistor was indeed defective. So it's a bit less embarrassing that I uh, went through all this trouble to replace it, because uh, it would have been embarrassing if I, uh, you know, if it was just a... a me not plugging it to it into the other boards so well a lesson learned but i th i hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh please subscribe see you next time